On August 15, 1977, the Ohio State University's Big Ear Radio Telescope picked up a signal that to this day seems to be the most likely candidate for a signal from another civilization, although it didn't have the sort of pattern that we would expect from a communication signal, all of the rest of the characteristics of this radio transmission bore the hallmarks of artificial origin. And ever since then, astronomers across the globe have put forward all kinds of human-made explanations and natural explanations, but none of them have really held water, which has led lots of people to talk about this signal as the first legitimate signal from a another civilization. However, that's a bit of oversimplification as well. But recently, another discovery was made in regards to this signal. Now, 45 years ago that we detected it, another new discovery in regards to this mysterious signal that seems to indicate that it may have originated from a sun-like solar system. A star with the exciting classification of 2 mass 19 281982-2640123. Yeah, exciting as hell, but the one thing that is extremely exciting about it is the fact that its temperature, diameter, and luminosity are almost identical to that of our own sun. Hello YouTube, I'm the Angry Astronaut, and this is... Now, of course, these sorts of stories tend to generate a lot of clickbait. I myself, of course, am guilty of these sorts of things, but as far as clickbait is concerned, I think that it's just as likely to see somebody publishing an article on these sorts of subjects to use the it's not aliens clickbait just as often as using the argument that it might be aliens or it could possibly be of artificial origin or something along those lines. The it's not aliens clickbait seems to be used constantly throughout the scientific community and it spills over into the general media all the time. And nowhere is this more apparent than with the story of the wow signal. As recently as 2017, an explanation for the wow signal, a natural explanation that is, was published online and had lots and lots of different duplicates that were created that explain the event as a transmission from a comet. Yes, a comet. That somehow a comet that generates very weak broadband signals had somehow generated this incredibly strong narrowband transmission. Now, this was an idea that was postulated way back in the 1970s and was actually completely debunked. But that doesn't prevent people from looking up the old evidence in the old explanations that were put forward way back then and then putting it forward as proof and evidence these days even though it was debunked decades ago. And this is not good science. It's not good journalism. But it's the kind of journalism that persists to this day simply because it's a lot more acceptable to say it's not aliens than to say the reverse. But what is the wow signal, or rather what was it, and what makes it such a strong candidate to this day? Well, there are a few characteristics of extraterrestrial signals that were being looked for back in the 1970s, and indeed are still searched for today, that made the wow signal so compelling. Number one, if we receive a signal from another civilization, we expect it to be narrow band. It's a much more efficient way of transporting transmitting information, or really to make any sort of use of radio waves. If you want to, say, send out a radar pulse to study your own solar system, as we did, by the way, not that long ago, you would send out a signal of exactly this type. Now, there is another characteristic that SETI was looking for, and that was the frequency. 
In the search for extraterrestrial civilizations, it is widely believed that any civilization would transmit at a frequency that corresponds to the frequency associated with hydrogen, simply because this is the most common element in the universe and would be universally recognized as a type of signal that an intelligent civilization might send out if they were trying to communicate in sort of a universal fashion. Yes, I said universe quite a few times there, but that frequency is 1420.4058 megahertz. The wow signal corresponded almost exactly with this signal at 1420.4556 plus or minus 0 0.005 megahertz, which would correspond to a signal coming from a star moving at about 10 kilometers per second relative to our solar system, something that's very, very common with stars moving at different velocities throughout the galaxy, so it seemed like we had a really good candidate for a narrowband signal coming in at the hydrogen line. And by the way, due to international agreements, no satellite, no transmitter anywhere on the planet transmits on this frequency or anywhere near that frequency. And although there are certain pieces of our own technology that can sometimes generate signals that correspond to this frequency and fool us, no candidate has presented itself over the last four and a half decades in stark contrast to many other signals that have been received that have been explained subsequently in a couple of years. For example, the Proxima signal that I did a video on about a year and a half ago. And the duration was also unusual, 72 seconds. However, that was the maximum amount of time that the Big Ear Radio Telescope was able to observe the target. It. So it's quite possible that the signal persisted for a lot longer than that. But unfortunately, it did not repeat. And that is another characteristic that SETI requires in order to regard a signal as being valid and legitimate. That having been said, though, it's worth pointing out that none of the signals that we've sent out or strong radio transmissions have ever repeated either, so why should an alien civilization have to follow our rules? As a result, astronomer Alberto Calabiero has spent a very long period of time researching a variety of stars within the general direction of the WOW signal to try to track down a likely candidate. Candidate. And after years of work, he has located a very compelling candidate, a candidate that is eerily similar to our own sun. The star in question is a G-class star, just like our own, but it bears a tremendous resemblance. A temperature of 5,783 degrees Kelvin, almost precisely the same as our own star. On top of that, its radius is 0.996-5662 solar radii. That is to say, almost precisely the same size as our star, and a luminosity of 1.00077. 366 times that of the sun. It's almost somebody put our sun into a 3D printer and put out a new copy. And although this star is right in the neighborhood as far as intergalactic terms are concerned, 552 parsecs, that is entirely too far to ever have any kind of meaningful conversation. However, it is definitely close enough for telescopes like the James Webb Telescope, for example, to take a close look at it, to determine whether or not there are any exoplanets in this solar system that have techno-signatures, for example, that might indicate the presence of a civilization. And that is what this paper is advocating, that we take a very, very close look at this star that once again bears a strange and uncanny resemblance to our own. And if we were to find some kind of techno-signature in that solar system, for example, spectrographic evidence of industrial pollution in one of the planet's atmospheres, we would have a complete game-changing event. Event. 
unquestionable proof that we had received some sort of signal or at least some sort of radio transmission from another civilization in another solar system and then the gloves would be off and a frenzied effort would be made to try to find more transmissions because as of right now we've barely started to look. If you looked at the universe as a giant ocean and looked at how much we've actually examined the universe for artificial signals, we've examined about the area of a hot tub. We haven't invested nearly enough effort in trying to find signals from other civilizations and to determine once and for all whether or not we are alone in the universe. Given the importance of that question, I think that a great deal of attention should be paid to this candidate and any other that we may find in the future. Please subscribe to my channel, check the description for a link to this particular paper and other ways to support my channel if you're interested in seeing more content like this and stay angry about space!